Welcome. This is all minus one quick shots. Folks, today I have State of the Union 2 Electric Boogaloo. Why State of the Union 2? Well, it is March 2nd, and we have yet to hear any word about a State of the Union. Now, I talked about the State of the Union the other week. Uh, not so much the lack thereof with uh, President Joe Biden, who is basically going to bed at the time the State of the Union normally would be out. But uh, I did kind of mention where we are at as a nation, and it is utter turmoil. We have thousands of troops in D.C. right now. We have states talking seriously about secession. Now, they've been talking about it before in the past. Uh, it's been a thing that we've gone through cycles of. But if there is any time that this is an actual real deal, it's probably in this generation and this day and age. Uh, Idaho is talking about it with parts of, uh, uh, that is to have uh, greater Idaho with parts of uh uh, Oregon and uh, Northern California. Of course, Jefferson, Northern California is talking about that. And speaking of California, we have the recall of Gavin Newsom, which is well underway with over 1.8 million signatures that apparently they have to confirm. Speaking of confirming signatures, you know, I was just at the post office because about three weeks ago or more, I was in Florida. My wife asked them to hold the mail. They never did. We got the mail anyways, and I went there today to get a package that supposedly was supposed to be delivered this past Friday uh, that UPS gave to the United States Postal Service. When I got there, the lady came out with the thing that my wife had delayed the mail, and I'm like, well, that's funny. Three pieces of paper, literally three letters over the last three weeks in this box, the only thing that was withheld. And she goes, well, I guess some of them withheld it and some of them didn't. Uh, no, nobody without it, except for this one person, this one guy, this is the federal government system, folks. This is the same post office that, uh, the lefties wanted to have you believe was the greatest institution ever. And they could handle the election just fine. There was no, no, uh, uh, fraud or anything suspicious whatsoever in these, uh, times that we have today, because the post office is just a neutral arbiter of, uh, <laughs> of government, I guess. I, I, I really don't know or understand. Um, we have Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head getting canceled of sorts, but it's just going to be Potato Head because that's what it originally was, and we don't want to offend people in the other 52,000 genders that were made up over on Tumblr the other week by a bunch of 12 to uh, you know 18-year-old girls who were confused, right? Making up crazy stuff, talking about cats and writing haikus or whatever else they might do. Um, I don't know what uh, the girls that age do per se, other than uh, I have a daughter who's 16 and, and I know what she does, but she's not part of the norm. Um, we have, according to Don from Plebeian Media, which I happened to catch this morning, um, we have Marines not shooting at the 500 yard line anymore. What is wrong with you, Marine Corps? I am ashamed. I'm ashamed. Back in my day, that's where you made your money. It was at the 500-yard line. Getting 8 out of 10, man, using iron sights. Just getting everything locked in, breathing nice and smooth, getting that nice cool exhale, squeezing that trigger, boom, right on target. No problems. Got a got a 20 by 40 man-sized target. 20 inches by 40 inches tall, 500 yards. You cut that thing in half with the front sight post. Make sure everything's there. You get your breathing nice and steady. Get everything nice and tight. It's money, man. It's, it, it, it is money. And um, they're getting rid of it because it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, everything is ACOGs now, and they don't really use iron sights. And I guess an ACOG at 500 yards is not something they're going to do. They're going to reshift their focus to closer range fighting, which is silly because close range fighting is uh, something that is a very specific skill set, and you have to get to the target first. And um, you need to know how to fight in all ranges. But hey, that's, that's, that's where it's at. I mean, the military a little while ago were making men wear high heels. Uh, officers who were in training and um, military schools wear high heels to, to uh, feel for the other gender. Well, I'm sorry, but women choose to wear high heels. And actually, they got that fashion, if you knew anything about the history of this, from men. Because there was a time and age where very tall high heels was fashionable for men around the Renaissance period. 
and uh, women stole that. And frankly, I, I I think that women look more attractive in it than men. Generally speaking, heels aren't good for you, folks. They uh, they shorten your uh, gastrocnemius, your uh, and solis. Those are the muscles of the hamstring, and all, or sorry, of the uh, calf, and they also shorten the the hamstring itself. Uh, makes your butt look good, but uh, not good for you long term. But this is the crazy stuff that we do as a species, like cutting our genitalia off and claiming we are of the other sex, even though there's no such thing as gender. The state of the union is that we are a really screwed up nation. And a lot of folks would say, well, this is just the end stages of capitalism. You know, all those big brained idiots out there. The end stages of capitalism. This is end stage capitalism. And you are a moron because Marx had no idea what he was talking about. He was proven wrong within 20 years. And it probably wasn't even Marx. It was mostly Angles. But regardless, um, guys, capitalism, free markets, that is, is a natural extension of just the hierarchy that we are placed in in a material world, right? Free trade and free exchange is something that basically comes out of meeting with outsiders and seeing that they have products and services that are uh, desirable. So initially, in a tribal setting, folks get together and they support each other because they need to survive. And, you know, you get your allotment of food, someone else gets that, and hopefully you don't live under a tyrant within this tribalistic system and there's unity. Eventually, you meet other tribes, you meet other people, other nations, and you go, wow, they got some cool technology. They got some uh, they got shoes, man. Those shoes are better than our little sandals. Let's get those things. And you start to trade and you find things of common value. And then over time you go, Hey, let's make alliances because you have skills and we have skills and we get along. Um, and I like what you do and your women are pretty and I want to breed with you and whatever else it is that, that people do over time. And they go, Hey, Let's build a fence and a gate and let's build up a civilization. Let's start farming. Let's do this. Let's make our lives easier. That's what happens. And the socialist communistic ways of tribalism go away. So what are we really seeing in the United States? Well, we're seeing the direct deliberate effort of uh, collectivists trying to destroy everything in the U.S. in order to demoralize the people. And that is working largely because you have people out there who are under psychological warfare, spiritual warfare, who are under attack, who basically feel completely alone, completely empty. They feel like no one is out there who gets them, who sees the things that they see, because half of the people out there who do see it aren't brave enough to talk about it, because we also have a society full of cowards and weaklings. We don't have robust individualism anymore. This is a problem. And we have a false dichotomy of the collective versus the individual instead of the reality of our nature. And that is that we are an individualistic creature who lives within a collective. And that collective can only get so big. Think Dunbar's number, 150 people or so. And after that, you're not really personally interacting with those folks. Therefore, you don't care about them. So we can... Uh, expand that out a little bit, but we're only talking maybe a few thousand people. And truly after that, there there is no point in trying to govern folks. Uh, you're just getting into territories of tyranny. And that's really what we're seeing. And in order to get those levels of tyranny, we have to divide. And in order to divide, we have to come up with every single stupid, crazy problem there might possibly potentially be. And the only way to really do that is to basically say, will you hurt my feelings? Because, folks, feelings are fleeting. They mean little. I'm not saying they're not important in your personal relationships, but most of the time, the folks that hurt your feelings are folks you don't even know. Why should you even care? You know, I would quote Dr. Seuss, but he was canceled too. Um, <laughs> the reality is Dr. Seuss had a very good quote on that, despite uh, Dr. Seuss's weirdness over the years. Uh, I would suggest you look into him and some of his very dark art, by the way. Um, not suggesting the gentleman should be canceled either, but he is a globalist as far as I know and uh, some some other things. Uh, but what he basically said is, you know, only the people that matter to you should you, you should mind. You, the people that matter to you should be the ones that you care about their opinions. Why do you care about the opinions of anyone else? Why do you care about the opinion of the 26-year-old barista 
who makes $15 an hour for making coffee and complains about how their life is terrible while they have a million and one face piercings, blue dyed color hair, and they have not applied themselves to anything and expect everything to be um, handed to them. Why do you care? Like to me, I see a person like that and I think, man, this is just a lost kid that society and their parents have failed. That's what I see. Um, I, I, I don't know how else to call it, guys. The state of the union is this. We have no leadership. The males who would be the leaders are suppressed and oppressed, unlike what the females are saying right now. They're, they're not in any way, shape, or form oppressed. Women are just leaping and bounding men, like as far as any metric is concerned. Men have a higher suicide rate. They have a higher rate on, on the job of, uh, sorry, deaths on the job. They, they are uh, increasingly less likely to finish school and so forth. I'm not going to get into all of the, uh, the honey badger points, all of the, the red pills about men, all the MGTOW stuff or uh, men's rights advocacy stuff. You can go look that up. This channel is not about that. This channel is about building strong societies and that requires masculine leadership. And it requires people to follow and accept that leadership as well. And until we get that back in balance, man, things are going to be a mess and they are just going to continue to be so. We have transgender sports right now that are basically displacing women out of the sports field. And that is exactly what is going to happen. By the way, folks, look, quick history lesson before I go here. All societies who have had an explosion of homosexuality and the trans thing, uh, this is historically correct all societies have basically fallen apart shortly afterwards and have become highly misogynistic misogyny as in the way that feminists present it that is the complete oppression of women comes when men no longer think that they need women anymore and i point to you the ancient greeks where they didn't allow women to do anything um and would not allow them to leave their homes really even or the uh the, what is it the zombie uh, the, the folks who uh, isolate their boys from the age of five and then teach them to fillet the teenage boys as they grow old because the semen makes them strong and the women are seen as second-class citizens. So homosexuality is uh, definitely within the, the scope of oppression of women and so is trans rights. Now, hopefully that doesn't get me banned from YouTube, but this is a historic, historical uh, perspective. It is correct. Go look at Camille Paglia's work because she will explain this to you. Uh, agree or disagree with the lady. She has a lot of very cogent points. And she is not some flaky feminist. She is about allowing women to be egalitarians with men, to be equals in their decision making. I would agree. At the same time, it doesn't mean that I'm going to allow myself to... Uh, be unevenly yoked in my family or amongst uh, women. I'm not going to seek their counsel as much, not because women don't have good counsel or can't be good leaders, but because men, uh, based on our genetic traits or the traits in which God bestowed upon us, are meant to be the leaders. And again, this is the reason why we have so much turmoil in the State of the Union today. And um, this is all, again, culture that has been driven from Marxist, Marxists that are in academia, the legacy media, the, um, the educational system. They are in the, the state. They are in the uh, Democrat Party, which is the largest party in the world, the uh, largest political party in the world with the most members. And um, they are the ones that run all the cultural institutions. And most of the people that are involved in these institutions don't even believe in the things that they say, but they know that the lemmings out there will listen because of my emotions. Well, I hate to tell you folks, but part of being a man is controlling those emotions. There's a reason why our amygdalas are wired differently than women's. We are meant to get stuff done not to be complainers and whiners. So that's pretty much it. I could go on forever.
but it's been about 15 minutes, so it's time to go. That has been the State of the Union 2 Electric Boogaloo. There could be all kinds of stuff that I could say about this, but just generally speaking, uh, look, there's not a lot really going on other than more of the same, and it's going to keep being more of the same until it breaks, and it will break down. It has to. This cannot go on forever. And the reason why it will break down is because there will be those who will call against folks like myself and say, he must be silenced and he must be stopped. And there will eventually be folks who say, no, enough. Unfortunately, our society is so weak at this point. We've bred so much um, effeminateness into it and and so much uh, emotional garbage into our society that there will be less standing up than in previous times. But I believe that we will come through with a remnant that will survive, that will carry on our heritage, that will carry on the traditions of the past, that will carry on the proper roles of men and women, and that will carry on the faith. With all that said, guys, this has been All Minus One Quick Shots, and I wish you all well.